Hey guys, this is Susie and today we're gonna make that awning that I was talking about. It was raining a little bit earlier this year and it was literally, it was just like a light rain and the whole thing started going down. <laughs> if it wasn't for a post that my dad had put in the front of the awning to support it, um, that the whole thing would have come down. It did need repair from the beginning, but it was left to the the back of the list because we haven't been able to to get to that spot but that's why my dad put that support and it saved the whole thing it, oh, otherwise it would have wrecked wrecked the house Pero esta cosa sí hay que, esto sí lo vamos a tener que quitar ahorita. Hay que cambiar. Porque... Ah, ya, se hubiera caído todo, compa. Mira, eh, levanta tú y yo lo voy a... So this happened, guys. The whole thing went down. If it wasn't for this uh, post that we, well, my dad put here since we came, I think the whole thing would have busted down gone down and just maybe damaged more. We didn't damage anything thankfully. So this is the front entrance and as you can see a little bit of rain in California does a lot. We're not prepared and this thing I needed to, to change the style because this thing is so bulky and horrible. I needed to change it a long time ago too. So I'm not going to repair the old awning. What I'm going to do is replace it with a better one that's going to be more sturdy, solid, and it's going to last for a long, long time. So I like to grab ideas from videos, Pinterest, and these are some of the ideas of the structure and the materials and the look that I want to achieve with this new awning. I'm going for classy, elegant, and very modern. What do you guys think? We're going to start by taking off the very real and present danger that is that siding veneer that this awning had all around it. It just started to peel off and it's heavy material guys. And I didn't want anyone walking by getting hurt if that fell on them or flying over and damaging the neighbor's car. It would make more problems than anything else so I took it off it was a little bit difficult because it had some sunken screws but I was able to take it off in the end so you see this I'm gonna grab like a flathead screwdriver this one's already used or anything with a sharp point and I'm just gonna dig. You might need a hot hammer as well or something to get rid of all this. And I'm not gonna do it more because I'm on the ladder. But you go all around to dig out this because you're not gonna use the material anymore. And that's gonna help you uh, get to the screw and be able to unscrew it. So it's officially demo day today, but you know how I don't like crazy demo it this is gonna be controlled demo because I don't want to damage my house more than <laughs> it already needs to be fixed so I'm prepping everything I'm setting up here the camera so that you guys can see and we'll get to it first things first I'm gonna take off that whole uh, metal metal thing that it has and then I'm gonna try to do the the structure so piece by piece that way I don't get everything falling down all at once, disaster. So let me show you how I do it. Another thing uh, that is gonna be very crucial right now is the weather. I only have a couple of days of sun. So today and tomorrow, I'm already starting late because I had to do some work in the early in the morning. So um, today afternoon, it's Friday, tomorrow, Saturday, we're gonna have sun. But then the next few days until like probably Tuesday, there's gonna be rain. So I need to get this down as soon as possible and get the structure going. That way I can 
have this ready for the rain. Goodness, I didn't see. <laughs> Go down. Go away. Okay, guys. So I just wanted to show you here. There's a bunch of like leaves. There's even like weeds growing here, guys. This is so crazy. It's not pretty. <laughs> so here, I just wanted to show you. There's a bunch of leaves that have accumulated during the years. I've been here four years, and who knows how many more things, how many more years before that but if you check this out this right here is compost it's really rich composted matter all the leaves all the sticks all the things that have fallen from the tree around and so I'm gonna collect this and I'm going to put it in a bucket and I'm gonna put it in my compost bin because this is good rich matter that I am harvesting from my roof, from my awning. So kudos to the awning for at least doing something really good here. I'm in here taking a little break because the leaf was so hot out there even though it's like cool right now in March and it's super rainy uh, but just doing the work gets you really worked up and uh, my face was just like super red so I needed to come take a break I ate an ice cream and then I took out three of those buckets from the rich soil that I showed you just amazing um, so now that I cleaned up all that, I am taking all of the screws out and I'm about to take out the, the metal part that is um, covering the awning. I think I had enough of a break. I can't stop otherwise I won't get up again. So let's go back outside. officially demoed there was crying there was yelling there was many many things guys now that we're all done kidding aside guys now I can go and see where the studs are I'm gonna probably use I don't know my oscillating tool or my circular saw just to like open a little bit there to to check where I can I can anchor everything and from there it should be should be okay um i did notice that all this part over here needs to be cleaned up painted and they had cut that piece there they cut the the part right there as you can see so we need to mend that because um i was gonna change it but i don't think we can um and i'll just clean it up real well put some paint and hopefully that'll take care of it
se ven bien. Muy bien, ¿verdad? Ajá. Entonces ahora lo que quiero Pero hacer para... que marcar aquí, mijas. Ya lo marqué. Ya. This is dead. Hey, my hands. Stud. Studs. Right there. So, I need to clean this up first. Paint it. And then I'm going to assemble the frame. The fascia there had been cut and hadn't been painted or anything, so I'm going to cut it again and repair. Then I washed with soap and water and just that made a huge difference. And now I was ready to repair with the silicone and then do the painting. So here is the wall. I cleaned it up. Isn't that such a difference? And now I'm gonna paint and make it get it ready for for the for the rest. Right here, as you can see, there was like a big chunk of um, of sealer. And so it took out the whole thing, even the paint. So I'm going to repaint. I'm going to seal it up again, but nicely, not chunky. Like they had left it. And then I had to take off that piece there. I'm just going to paint it, seal it, do the same here. And just clean it up to make it ready. And uh, now I'm noticing, I'm noticing that this part here needs to be cleaned up too. Just a sponge, I think, is gonna be nice and clean to leave it ready for later. Okay, so I started cutting with the circular saw, but then I saw it was too difficult. And I remember that I have my oscillating tool, so I ended up doing that. And right now I'm just gonna be painting, uh, putting some uh, white paint there, and um, leave it like that, so that if it rains, it's gonna be okay. And then as you can see, those are the holes that I had to do with the circular to be able to see where the beams are. And I already marked everything on the on my on my two by four, and now I'm just gonna transfer it so that I can uh, fasten it here and uh, do the structure. I know that this probably wasn't the best time to start doing my house uh, awning renovation but this is where we're at and timing isn't always perfect so there you go thankfully nothing has gone into inside the house but I will put something like a tarp to cover and like deflect the water to go out the outside instead of splashing all into the into the door here so let's do that
my dad checking out how straight it is. And that is our last piece. So we're set. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> Today I'm gonna be sanding. It's um, last time that I talked to you, it was Friday and I needed to work Friday and Saturday. I did work on Friday and then I worked a little bit on Saturday, but we had to leave with my parents. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> and so now um, it rained all night yesterday and now I have to get all this wood prepped sanded cut and hopefully put together it looks like the rain stopped and i have to check on the forecast oh my gosh i'm tripping it looks like it's not gonna rain for the next couple of hours so i'll do as much as possible and then i'm going to after sanding prepping and everything i'm going to oil the wood the first uh, piece I already did that so it's now a matter of doing the rest this is the estate of, the <laughs> of how my miter saw looks right now and that's how it's gonna be for the meantime I don't have time to do anything fancy so it's work time let's go And here's the wood already sanded as you can see it's nice and smooth I used I believe this was an 80 grit I'm using like leftover sandpaper that I have and hopefully I have enough to sand everything that I that I need to sand but this is the redwood sanded to 80 grit and then this is not sanded you can see the huge difference that you can make when you actually sand the the wood it is totally rough and then the only the other thing that i wanted to mention is that when you don't sand the wood and you oil it afterwards it takes up so much oil when you're sanding and when you have already sanded this takes less oil and it looks so much smoother more elegant more like put together and done Now I'm going to be painting these brackets. I'm going to use them to um, hold the structure on the sides of the awning. And I had already done this. Uh, these are only like a dollar or something. Um, I'll try to put the, the total. It's like 118, something like that. <clears throat> but if you go and buy the ones, because these are the metal ones. If you go and buy them uh, from the Home Depot and they're like the fancy ones that are a little bit uh, thicker metal, they are way more expensive, about $10, $15 per piece. These are like a dollar something per piece. I already have this um, semi-gloss. You could do matte, whatever you want to do. I'm doing them in black so that it looks nice and classy. And with the redwood, it's going to look really, really nice. 
So I'm just gonna spray them real fast and it says here that you have to have a temperature to spray. You have to be between 50 degrees and 90 degrees. I am at 55 degrees right now so I think I'm just past that that uh, line where I can do this and I hope that they can dry nicely and I can put everything together so easiest thing you can you can do spray shake the pan real fast and then once you have it do like a like a little test this one I think because it's been on the on storage it's not spraying super super well but you make do so I'm just doing one side first try to spread them out nicely and then I'm gonna do one side it's not spraying the best but I'm gonna go try to see if I can put a needle through this and then maybe it'll spray better spray lightly it's better to do less than more in this case and then you can go and do another layer later so I'm gonna try this technique where they put this wood has like some can you see the holes it has like I don't know if they're holes or if it was like damaged so, oh my god, my hand feels, I've been sanding, been sanding that one right now, and these other beam, and I didn't notice that this one has a lot of knobs, on top of that, it has like a big spaces here, that I think I'm going to use this technique that I'm telling you about, where you put the glue and then you put the sawdust, and I have my sawdust right here, in this container, I have more, but this, I think that should be enough, right? Can you see the dinosaur? I made a dinosaur. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you see the dinosaur or what do you see here. Anywho, I'm crazy. I'm going nuts. I'm gonna be pouring a little bit of this sawdust, which is from this same redwood. And then kind of like mix it in. Mix it in. And then I'm going to let it dry, and then I'm going to sand it again. Let's see if it works. Uh, kind of. Okay, let's bring it over to the side. And we'll put it. Mm -hmm. I'm not even focusing. My hands feel so numb right now because I've been sending for a long time. I can't explain the feeling, but I feel like you know when that you things vibrate and then like <laughs> that's how my hand feels right now, like it's going like this. But if I put it like this, it's not moving, thankfully. So I'm adding the dust. I think I might need to add more glue, but it's looking pretty good. More glue? Let's add more glue. Sorry if I'm not focusing. I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing here. Because I need to fill this gap. Like it. If I had epoxy, I don't know if you can do epoxy, but that would be kind of cool. I don't know if you can do it for the outdoors. Oh my gosh, so just <laughs> I'm eating it too. Uh, I think it needs more. Okay, I need to do this with two hands. I'll come back. Okay, that was impressive. This is so cool. So I put the glue, then I put the sawdust, and now it looks pretty cool. I don't see, there was like a bunch of like, over here. Let me see, on this side too. Oh my gosh, I almost dropped the dust. I think if I drop a little bit more glue and dust, I might do it. Even if with the same dust that the sander 
throws um, you can do it too so I'll come back and show you but right now I just want to show you before well in the middle yep I would say this is a success it looks pretty pretty good it fills it up let's find I saw some more oh yeah look at that this space here I'm gonna try it again and see how it comes out okay so now it is time to make the cuts so now I have the two remaining beams um, all sanded as you can see and I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm going to make a template of what the angled beam is gonna be that way um, I can just come to the side and cut it and go back and install it with the real beams okay so this material was for a fence that i was doing on the side patio and i had already sanded this and i decided that i could use this for the structure so this part we're gonna use to sandwich it in between the structure and the roof these uh, i believe was like an eight foot by one by probably five i don't know if that's correct i'll find the correct dimensions and put them right here and I love how that evening was looking so beautiful with the light just making everything golden. So I went to get, this is going to be for the top of my awning. We were going to do shingles, but I realized that the shingles are too heavy. And now we changed the whole thing to have this gobelum, gobelinum? It's like an aluminum um, roof. And so we went to cut it. Thankfully, I was able to find it at Lowe's. Home Depot didn't have it. But when I went to get it, I had to cut it in half so that I could fit it in the car. And very nicely, the guys there offered to do it. But unfortunately, they were not doing a good job. Here is where the guy was cutting. And then he went to go find somebody. And I took over and I finished the cut and it's this one over here. I mean, I'm not bragging, but I think I did much better. But at the same time, he cut it shorter. So I have to cut everything at the same length so that I can fit it. Thankfully, we were over and it's not gonna ruin my project, but the guys cut. I'm gonna use this file to go over the places where I cut because there are some uh, rough spots, well not rough but sharp spots that I wanna work on and have it very safe. So I made myself a wall. I covered my brother's car so nothing would be like any paint will fly over. And then I made myself a wall but it fell over. But I made it back again. So a quick explanation, I'm going to be priming the, the metal and then, oh dear, see I made, I put something there so that it, the wind would, the wind wouldn't knock it down so I think it's working so back to this I'm priming it and then after that I'm gonna be doing that high heat I know it's overkill but I'm doing a high heat um, spray in black semi-gloss and I hope everything goes well
I ended up priming and painting three of the panels, which is going to be enough for the 8 foot span for my awning. If you guys know of a good paint spray brand, let me know because I've used from really high end to very low end. Everything seems to get stuck at some point and I have paint cans sitting there with paint because I can't get, get it out. I did four coats of paint to cover everything really well and then I let it dry. We did the demo, came up with a new design idea, gathered all the materials and prepped them for the build. So with these projects done, we're all set to do the main structure build. 